Well, good morning. Welcome to Joe's Dark Room, and we're going to do a video today about some updates to my film canister pinhole camera project. I hope this is of value to you, so stay tuned. Well, as you might remember, in the original uh, configuration of this project, I have these little film canisters, and I was using black electrical tape on the shutter. And of course I have magnets on the bottom of the canister and I stick them to the metal, metal tripod plate. All right, there's the tripod bushing for mounting them. And you also might remember that I had a little storage box uh, to put the canisters in, right, to carry around. Well, what I've done since that last video is I've built a lid for it, of course. So there's a lid that slips on the box and I can put a rubber band around it. Now I can throw the box in my backpack and uh, I won't have uh, too many problems with the canisters spilling out and getting out of order and whatever. But there's another uh, update that I made to this design and uh, you might remember I was mentioning in maybe in my blog, my pinhole blog, that the problem I had with this film canister design with using the tape as a shutter was I originally had the tape wrapped around sideways on the canister and because it's sticky when you try pulling the tape off it kind of moves the camera and I had some blurry shots as a result and I had been thinking about how to fix this and how to make a better shutter and I come up with this idea along with some suggestions from some of my readers and viewers so I shoot um, Fuji Instax, the wide, Instax wide instant film, and they, and they have these cartridges that the film comes in, and I kind of save these cartridges because you can actually open up the flap under here and slip one of the prints inside, and it makes kind of a handy little frame. But along with the cartridges, they have the dark slide that gets ejected from the, from the cartridge when you first uh, take the first shot. Well, this is flexible black opaque sheet plastic. And so what I've done is <clears throat> I've cut some pieces of this plastic and I have uh, you know, a strip that's about 18 millimeters wide. And then there's a, it doesn't completely cover the cartridge uh, all the way around. There's a little gap and you have to put some gaffers tape in there on the back side of it so it, it doesn't stick to the cartridge. But these, these film canisters are about a half a millimeter wider on top than they are on bottom. And since I use the canister upside down like this, um, it, so I keep it the pinhole covered in the middle and I pull it up like that to expose it. And then I simply push it back down when I'm done. And it's nice and snug. It stays in place. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, way to upgrade these little canisters. So I would recommend if you guys are making these uh, film canister pinhole cameras, try to, try to get some of these uh, thick black sheets that you can cut with a paper trimmer into strips and wrap around your film canister. Now there's another source of plastic if you can't find that. It's a little thicker. If you go to the office supply stores and get one of those three ring binder notebooks that has the flexible plastic covers, uh, you can cut that stuff with a paper trimmer and use it also and with gaffer's tape. So I talked about upgrading the shutter to the camera with the, uh, the uh, Fuji Instax dark slides. I talked about uh, making the lid to my carrying box. Well, there's a, a third change that I've made, and that is a little bit of changes to the way that I'm metering uh, with this camera. So the focal ratio of these cameras is about f120. And what I've always done for metering with pinhole is I use a Gaussian Luna Pro F meter, and I set the ISO of the meter to the ISO of my paper. And then I, uh, I reference the exposure time against F128 on the meter, and then I have to multiply that by a correction factor, which accounts for the fact that the pinhole camera's f-stop is different than F128. Well, because 128 is pretty close to 120, I think the correction factor was like 0.94, what I've done with this latest round of pictures is I am actually, instead of rating the Harman direct positive paper at an ISO of 8, I'm rating it at an ISO of 10. And 
instead of uh, using the F120, I'm just using the F128 reading on the light meter. So what this means for me in the field, in a practical sense, is I can use the reading directly off the meter opposite F128 and I don't have to pull out my calculator and do the conversion anymore. And so it, it makes for just a much speedier, quicker process out in the field. So that's the other change I've done. And now this latest batch of three pictures that I took yesterday, I'm also using uh, reflected the reflected metering setting uh, and it, it works fine too. So I'll show you some examples here in a minute. Now there's another uh, slight change that I've made to the way that I'm processing my Harman Direct Positive paper in, out of these cameras. So you may recall from one of my older videos that I sometimes use a 35 millimeter stainless uh, developing tank on a, let me get it here, on my homemade rotary base. And um, this combination is a very handy little system. And the way I do this, well, the way I've done it in the past, I should say, is I will take the pieces of paper and I'll slip them in the gap between the film reel and the wall of the tank. You know that Harman paper has a natural curve to it because it's fiber-based paper. And I just uh, orient the paper so the natural curve fits along the side of the tank. Well, what I've had on several occasions is the problem of don't know if the camera is going to focus on this, but the edges of the reel, um, like the little cross spokes here, the, the, the end of that is kind of sharp. And I've had problems with the pictures getting gouges in the emulsion, leaving little white marks where the emulsion has been flaked off by, these, by the agitation of these reels. So what I did um, yesterday in my developing is I... I develop the pictures in the tank without the reels. And what I'm using to keep the Harman paper in place is I bought some of this. This is drafting tape. It looks like masking tape, but it's drafting tape from an art supply store. The particular brand I'm using is Pacific Arc. Um, but it's the kind of a tape where you can cut off um, about a maybe three quarter inch, maybe two or three centimeter piece and you can wrap it in a little loop like this and you can stick it on the back of the Harman paper and then again because the Harman paper has a natural curve to it you stick the Harman paper along the inside wall of the tank and I I was able to develop three uh, pictures in this tank yesterday and the pictures were oriented uh, in a triangular fashion 120 degrees apart in the tank but that worked really well I'm using um, I'm using 100 milliliters of solution in, uh, in this tank. So it only goes up to about maybe here. And you're, of course, doing it sideways with the lid on in rotary processing. And I develop for three minutes. I'm using the Ilford Universal or Ilford Multigrade Paper Developer, and I dilute it 1 plus 15. So that uh, worked really well for me. I didn't get any marks or any blemishes on the, uh, the, those little prints at all. Now you might be wondering, um, how best is it to rinse these prints once you've finished processing them? After all, they are fiber-based and they are gonna take some rinsing, right? Well, they're so small that they kind of float on top of the surface of the water. So what I've done is I have these little quarter 20 nuts, the size of it doesn't really matter. They're just simple, cheap little zinc or steel nuts from the hardware store. And I've looped them through a cable tie. And I leave the end of the cable tie uh, as a handle. And so what you do is you take your little inch and three quarter square print. Now this is just cardstock simulating it, but there's gonna be a natural curl to the to the paper and you want to bend it in the natural curl and then you want to hold it temporarily so the nut is down at the at the joint of the tie wrap and you want to fit it in there like that and that's like a little taco and what that does it's a counterweight that you can stick these in a your tank of water for rinsing and they'll stay down there they won't float to the surface now because I live in a desert climate and it's not really helpful to flush rinse water down the drain. 
I take this out to my landscaping, like my tree in the front yard, and I stick a garden hose in it, and I, as I rinse my prints, I'm watering my landscaping. So you kind of want to have to think about those kind of things when you, to conserve water. But that's how I'm rinsing these little prints. I'm using these little loop, counterweighted loops uh, to make little tacos, if you will. Now another question I ha I've had in working with this new little pinhole camera system is how am I going to store these little paper prints? Um, you know, they're one and three quarter inches square approximately. Well, I was rummaging through my, my shelves in my office and I came across a whole stack of these old um, clear file slide mount sleeves, right? So these are the sleeves for putting uh, 35 millimeter transparencies in. And what I've done is because my batch, uh, a full batch of cameras is nine shots. Um, so I've, these little prints fit perfectly inside each sleeve. And I have a picture and then I have a piece of card stock for that picture that has the exposure information. So there's the second picture. So this first picture not sure. I'll, I'm going to put some uh, still pictures in the, in this video so you can see these a little better. But this is a succulent plant on my front porch with a chair. This one is a glass garden globe in a flower pot. And this is the wall of my courtyard. And this one is a chair, a patio chair in the corner of my backyard. Um, all of these were 25 second exposures. Um, F128 on the meter, etc. And so as you can see, I'm numbering each camera. I start at nine and it goes down to one, as I indicated in the last video. So this is kind of the way that I'm going to be storing these prints. And I can put them in binders. Um, I also have an idea for how I might want to present these in terms of being displayed. And I haven't, I mentioned a little bit about that last video, but I I haven't uh, succeeded yet in building the little mounts, but I'm going to be working on that soon. So in any event, this has been uh, an update on my little film canister pinhole camera project. I've been really satisfied with the way these little prints come out. I really love their intimate size and their quality. You know, these are fiber base gelatin silver pictures. Uh, they're intimate sized. It's just the total antithesis to the current world of digital imaging where these are small intimate physical in size and they're at a one-to-one -one scale and they're the original in-camera media they're not a copy of anything they're kind of one-of-a-kind little pictures it's a great little project and i love it and i'm going to continue doing more of it and i hope this inspires you to do your own little pinhole camera project Well, until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourself a great day.